Hey there students, in this group we're going to be going over how to generate um, piecewise defined functions for, for graphs. So let's take a look at this example. Now let's write down the instructions uh, for the question. So the two examples we're going to look at instructions are as follows. We are to um, write, write a piecewise, a piecewise uh, defined function, defined function for for the following graphs okay so um, you're going to be provided with graphs as indicated here and then we're going to generate piecewise defined functions for the graphs all right so this is graph number one all right so to generate a piecewise defined function we need to take a look at this graph and determine where the splits are happening or where the different distinct functions are so if you look at this, you notice that there's a line here, there's a jump discontinuity, another line here, and then there's a, an edge, a, a shift or a corner, and then there's another line here, okay? All right, so that easily tells us that there are going to be three functions for, for uh, to define this graph, all right? So to make things easier for us, what we're going to do is we're going to partition um, this uh, space into three sections, okay? So uh, let's take a look at the first section. All right, so the first line ends right here, at this point right here, so let's put the first partition. Okay, so there goes the first partition, and then the second one is in between these two regions right here, so let's put the next partition, and then there goes the last one uh, right there, okay? All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to label our partitions. This is region one, and then this is region two, in between here and then this is region three all right to make things easy for us let's put the numbers there um this is one on the x coordinate and then this is two on your on your x-axis okay all right so for this region region one we have a specific uh inequality for x that applies here so for region one we have open circle as indicated in this line here and then we're going to have a line uh, going way to the left like that all right. Okay, so for this region, let me change the color so we don't get confused. I'm going to change the color of my line. Let's make it a green. All right, so for region one, this line, what uh, linear inequality in one variable defines this line? This line, anything uh, less than one, excluding one, is the inequality defined by um, x is less than one. Okay, so this is going to be the, the constraint on the first function. It's going to be whatever the function is, as long as x is less than 1. In between, for region 2, we have an open circle here and an open circle here and everything in between. So we have a bounded region. So for region 2, it's going to be the inequality defined by 1 as less than x, and x is less than, wait a minute, this line is included, so we can put a closed line here, like that, so, so less than or equal to 2. Okay, so it's open on the left and included on the right, all right, because we don't have an open circle here. And then for region 3, this region right here to the right, let's indicate where that is, to the right of um, 2, of x equals 2, let's change the color so we all can get this, um, let's make it green also. All right, so for that region, the inequality for that region is going to be, for region 3, is x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay? All right, so there you have it. So now our next task is to determine the equation for each line, and then we can piece together our piecewise defined function. All right? Okay, so for line 1, it's called L1. We need to define a right equation of a line. We need two things. We need a slope and a y-intercept, okay? So what is the slope of line 1? Uh, M1. The rise of a run, just pick two points, uh, pick a point here, and pick a point there. So we're going to rise one and run one. So one over one is your slope for this line, one over one. And then your y-intercept uh, is going to be where the graph cuts the y-axis, right there. One, two, three, four, five. So your y-intercept D is five. So using this information, we're going to plug it into the uh, slope-intercept form of the equation of the line, which is y equals mx plus b. 
So line one is going to be defined by the equation uh, um, y equals uh, 1 over 1 x plus 5. Okay, I can just write it as uh, um, the same thing as y equals x plus 5. Okay? All right, now let's uh, take a look at the second function. We have one down, two to go. For line two, we are in region two. Line two. So for line two, uh, for line two, basically line two is the line in region two. Okay, so let's let's get that straight. Line two, line two is the line in region two. So it's this line, this little horizontal line here between one and two. So for that one, the slope slope of the second line is rise over run. There's no rise, so it's going to be zero. And you run one, so it's zero over one which is zero, and the y-intercept of the line in region two, if you extend this line to the x-axis, what happens? If you extend it to the, I'm sorry, to the y-axis, it's going to intercept at two. So uh, it's going to be equal to two, okay? Now, the equation for line two, for, y, for the second line, y2, this is y1, so y2 is going to be um, zero x, plus 2, which is equal to the same thing as uh, y um, equals to 2. Okay? All right, so that goes our second line. We have, let's underline them so they get confused. This is our first line. And then the second line is y equals 2. And then I'll, we're going to do the same procedure for line 3. Okay? So for L3, uh, the slope of the third line is rise of a run. So we just pick two points, stick this point and that point. You notice we rise one and run one. One over one is your slope. So um, M of the third line or the line in region three is one over one, which equals one. And the Y intercept, well, what is the Y intercept? All we just have to do is extend this line straight down to the Y axis. Okay. All right, having done that, we can clearly see that um, the y-intercept is zero. Okay, that's where the line intersects the y-axis had it had the opportunity to extend beyond this boundary, okay? So b of three is gonna be zero. So that means that y3, the equation of my third line, is going to be one over one is just one, one x plus zero, which is the same thing as y equals uh, x, all right? So that goes our three um, functions. So all we just have to do is write, have, write a function placing um, the right function in the right intervals, all right? So we're going to put all three functions together. So this is what our piecewise defined function will look like. Whenever you're constructing a piecewise defined function, you put the function in the leftmost interval first. Okay, that's function one in this case. So function one is x plus five, as indicated here, x plus five, x plus five here. And where is it x plus five for? is x plus 5 as long as you're to the left of this vertical line, as long as you have x is less than 1. So you write x plus 5, comma, the constraint is when x is less than 1. Okay? And then for the second function that goes in the center, a uh, function in the next region, you know, you, you, label your, you write down your functions from left to right. We have the first one, now the second one is the horizontal function, which is 2. Where is the function two from one less than x and x is less than or equal to two, all right? And the last but not the list is function three, which is y equals x for where? When x is greater than or equal to two, all right? So this is the piecewise defined function uh, of this graph right here, all right? Let's go ahead and and then and box our and box our answer. All right, so there goes your your final solution. All right, let's take a look at question number two. Okay, we have a graph. Uh, we're going to do the same procedure. Um, we're going to write the, this piecewise defined function that uh, that has this graph right here. Okay, so we can clearly see we have three functions here again. One, uh, function one, function two, function three. So how about we go ahead and partition our functions into the respective regions, label the regions, and start uh, assigning functions to each line, all right? All right, so let's partition our, our functions. So the first break happens here at x equals negative 1. The next break happens right here. 
Okay. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and indicate the values on our x-axis so we don't get confused. Um, this is negative 1. This value right here is negative 1. And this value right here is 1, 2, 3 is positive 3. Okay. And then also this one ends at this point right here. So let's include that. Uh, which is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't go on in perpetuity. It, it actually stops somewhere. So since it's bounded, uh, let's just uh, put a line for that also. All right, so there goes the far uh, bounded region. All right, so what we're going to do now is uh, let's label our, our regions, okay? So this is region 1 right here. Region 1 is from this line, x equals negative 1, to the left, anything to the left of this line, that's region 1. And the inequality for uh, region 1 is x is less than negative 1, okay? Region 2 goes from negative 1 all the way to 3. And it's open circle, or it's closed circle here, and then open circle here. The region here is also sandwiched region, so we have, for here is um, negative 1 is less than or equal to x. Right, and then x is less than 3. That's for region 2. And then for region 3, where we have the third, fu third function, we have open circle here all the way to closed circle there, this region. So what's the inequality that represents this region? It's also bounded. It's going to be from 3 less than x, and x is less than or equal to 4. All right? Okay, so that goes our three regions. Um, now let's go ahead and find down the find the functions uh, for these three uh, regions. All right, so um, this is going to be, this is going to be my line one right here. This is my line one, this is line two, and this is line three. All right, so for line one, the first line, all we need is the slope and y-intercept like we did before. For this line, the slope, let's pick two points. Uh, pick a point here and a point here. So we're going to fall to and run 1. You always run left to right. Okay, so your rise is going to be negative 2 and your run is going to be 1. Okay, so for L1, the M is going to be negative 2 over 1, which is equal to negative 2. And your Y-intercept, B2, I'm, I'm sorry, B1, the Y-intercept of your first line is what you get when you extend the line to the Y-axis. Okay, so if we extend this line to the Y-axis, we can clearly see that it's going to drop straight down it's going to since you're going down two over one the same procedure here straight line is going to go and intersect right there all right let me use a different color so you can see so if you extend this line with a ruler it's going to go straight down to this point right here boom okay it's going to intersect that negative one all right so uh let me ooh. all right so if i extend this line straight down you notice it's going to intersect that negative one all right, so let's go ahead and uh, indicate that uh, the y-intercept is going to be, for the first line, is going to be negative 1. Okay, so now what's the equation of, our, of L1? Uh, function 1 is going to be negative 2x minus 1. Plug in m and b into y equals mx plus b equation. Okay, all right, so for line 2, we need to find the slope here also. Just pick any two points, pick that point and pick that point. You notice we're going to rise 1 and run 1, 1 over 1. So your slope is going to be 1 over 1 for line 2. So for line 2, m2 is going to be rise 1, run 1, which equals 1. And then the y-intercept for line 2 is obvious. We can see it intersecting negative 1 here, so it's also going to be negative 1. So that means the second line, y2, plug in m and b into y equals mx plus b is going to be 1x, which is just x minus 1. All right? Okay, line 3. Now look at this line right here. This is line 3, the line in region 3. Uh, the slope, you notice that, let's pick two points. Pick a point here, pick a point here. You notice it has zero rise on a run of 1. So uh, m is going to be um, 0 over 1, which is just 0. And the y-intercept for line 3, b3, is uh, if you extend this line, it's always constantly 3, right? Y is equal 3, so Y equals 3. B equals 3. So this tells me that Y3 is simply going to be 0X plus 3, which is the same, the same thing as Y3 equals 3. 
all right? Okay, now we have our three functions. This is the first one, function number one. It's going to be graph, uh, written in region one, and then function two for region two, and then function three for region three, all right? We're going to piece all these functions together in your respective intervals, and that will be our piecewise defined function. So y equals, now remember you always start from left to right. The leftmost function is a function in region one, which is function one negative 2x minus 1, and the constraints there is for x as long as x is less than negative 1, okay? Function 2 is x minus 1. What are the constraints? As long as x is between negative 1 and 3, negative 1 included, so negative 1 less than or equal to x, x is less than 3. And then the last function is uh, y equals 3. What are the constraints there as long as x Oh, is actually, x is actually sandwiched here too. Um, x is sandwiched between uh, uh, three, excluded and excluded and four. So x is between three and four, with three being excluded, like that. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six, isn't four? This is six. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, uh, between three and six. Okay. So there goes the piecewise defined function that represents uh, this, this graph right here. All right, so there goes your final answer. Let's go ahead and box it. So that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here and please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on mycoaster.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.